What's up, boys and girls? You got oh. So to start a production day, we have a clean, disinfected, sanitized environment. This place is pristine. We get a lot of questions about how, as a food processor, we keep everything looking like this after the end of every production cycle and before the start of a new production cycle. You'll find our floor like this, and what's more, there is absolutely no odor when you walk into our shop. And that's from a place that's taking livestock in the back door, turning out packaged product. That's right. Sean has a huge amount to do with the sanitation here, but it also has to do with the cleaners, the systems, the practices we use. We're gonna be showing you all of that in today's video. So stay tuned. We're gonna show you how we went from this back to this. So as production is about to begin, we want to talk about a clean environment. It's a safe environment. So we're trying to do three things here, uh, clean, um, disinfect and sanitize. In order to do that, you're going to need a system in place. Now for us, what we found hot water with good pressure, and then we use an enzymatic cleaner and then we use a quat sanitizer. That system will get us to this point where we have what we consider a safer, cleaner environment than even your own home. Let's first talk about your water. Now, of course, you're going to need to check with your uh, regulatory body, whether it be on a county, state, or federal level, perhaps all three, depending on what your production is. We are under a municipal water supply. Um, if you have well water, that's going to change but we have municipal water. So good, clean water, obviously coming into your building. And I'll show you the systems that we use because we actually pressure that water up and we get it nice and hot. So let's go take a look at the, the equipment. All right. So where we have our inline water coming into our building, we have a two horsepower centrifugal pump that basically has a, I don't know, flywheel in it and it, grabs that water and it spins it up and it gives us about 95 PSI. Starts with the pump. This is a regular water heater. That's not gonna cut it. Over here we have a hybrid Renai water heater. In fact, I'll give you the model number. It's a UR119G-R. We're gonna use about 300 gallons of water in our one hour cleanup process. This gives us, I think the capacity, it's 199,000 BTU. It's gonna give us like 315 gallons in our first hour, and then it recovers. So it's a hybrid. It's got both a tank and it's tankless. So it can give us that initial burst of hot water, and then it can also keep some hot water on demand for us. So we've got pressure off of our centrifugal pump, now we've got 199,000 BTUs of hot water. That's gonna come out of our hose. Um, it's 175 at the water heater. It's gonna come out of our hose right about 150. That's important because it's going to um, help melt all those fats and oils and um, really get them cleaned off of those surfaces. So good clean water coming into your building, uh, lots of it. Centrifugal pump, spinning that water up to about 95 um, PSI. And then we've got some good hot water coming out of that hose. Now let's go look at our cleaners. I'm gonna show you these in use here in a minute. It's a Damon Industries product. We've used it here for about 15 years or more in our shop. This is a um, enzyme-based detergent. So it's their DeClean APC all-purpose cleaner, specially formulated for food processing. These enzymes are actually going to work to eat and break down those proteins and those fats. So we'll put this on and we'll let it set for a minimum of 10 waters. Now it's mixing in um, at the correct parts per million while we put it on our product or put that product on all of our tables and let it sit and soak. Then we'll do um, you know, our wash down, use that good hot water, get all the particles, debris, proteins, everything removed. 
And then finally, we're going to use the uh, QSAN sanitizer and deodorizer. Um, that's going to go on and that's going to actually disinfect and sanitize once everything's clean. So these are great for both your odors. They also go down into your drains and clean them. So this system right here running through our distributor gives us the correct parts per million. A lot of this is set up by the manufacturer. We do check it with pH strips, make sure that we're hitting the parts per million that we want. But those systems, so good clean water, pressurized, then hot, now with our enzyme cleaner and our quat sanitizer, gonna get us to that pristine clean environment. So let's get this place filthy, then let's get it clean. Okay, production day is over. You can see everything is a mess. Obviously you've got blood and fat and oils. So first step of the cleaning is we're gonna start pulling our mats off the floor. And cleaning really begins with trying to remove as much excess debris as possible. So if you take a look, you're gonna have all your collection of bone dust and your saw, scraps all over the floor. Rather than just get a hose out and start washing this all down, which is of course bad for your drain system, which we are on a septic system here too. So again, back to your whole municip municipalities. Blah, 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 blah. If you have uh, sanitary from your uh, village, they may have you do wastewater things. We are on septic. So, but anyway, we're going to start by scraping tables, picking mats up, scraping the floor, getting as much of this loose, um, this loose stuff cleaned up and put in a barrel so then we can actually start our soaking process and then on through the uh, cleaning process. Two methods here. One is CIP, clean in place. A lot of the equipment's gonna stay right where it is. The other one is we're gonna break the equipment down as much as, as we're able to. So if it's, uh, it's not actually bolted onto, a lot of the equipment comes apart. We're gonna break it down that's just going to make it easier to clean. So about 50% of it is going to stay in place and 50% of it, we're going to move to our back room um, and get started with all the pieces and parts there. And then this room will soak and then we'll do this room. Honey, I'm home. While we know those are the words you'd love to be saying, unfortunately, it's hours before you get to leave work. And in the meantime, we got the perfect snack for you. That's right. Beef and honey collide to make the perfect pick you up afternoon snack. The deliciousness of our original beef sticks with now a hint of sweetness will have you getting through your afternoon until you can say the words, honey, I'm home. Mm. Oh, sweet and delicious. That was a lot of honey. <laughs> He loves been, that. You've been doing that all day. Quick little story. So Sean has done the CIP, the clean in place stuff, forever. He just said he wanted to retire. He's Cinderella. Never gets invited to the ball, I said. 3-0. 30 years. Um, I've cleaned the stuff in the back for about 25 years. But I just recently graduated. Josh is doing that now. Old boy right here. He is never, never clean cleaned a day on a regular basis. Easy. I cleaned my pickup truck. He uh, he gets the master busher uh, status, I guess. But anyway, hey, um, 
just real quick while you're seeing me clean out these grinders, these worms, just so you know, this product right here goes into pet food, so we don't throw yeah, it away. Yeah, we do recycle. Um, but anyway, what he's doing, he's just taking and cleaning out all the, I guess, debris. <laughs> the debris that, um, again, you don't want to wash that down with your drain. Plus, your enzymes aren't going to work if you have a lot of heavy debris. So we're going to clean stuff with our fingers out of the crooks and crannies, and then... Um, in some cases we spray it down a little bit or scrape it with a scraper so that way those enzymes get in there and work. Never turn the machine on to run the product out of the worm. So it's a good idea to unplug your machine and pull everything out manually, never turn it on. It's a good way to lose a finger. Working with children. No way. What? This is where we're um, doing everything that's not CIP. So the internal parts of the grinder, the mixer, the mats, the barrels, the tubs. Let's go check on the CIP stuff. So Sean is applying the DeClean APC all purpose cleaner. This is an enzymatic cleaner. So these enzymes are going to work and this is specially formulated to mix in with the warm water and this will sit here and these enzymes will just begin to break down all these fats and oils while the other items are getting cleaned in the back tell them why, why we, we do tell them why we do it because a clean environment is a safe environment that's right so now that sean has or excuse me everything in the back all the internal parts, everything have been cleaned. Sean's gonna start the clean in place. And as this is sat here and soaked, everything's just gonna lift off now with that hot water and pressure. So he's just gonna go through and systematically from the top down, clean every piece right in place, clean the floor. cleaning is done um, we want to disinfect and we want to sanitize so that's where our QSAN is coming in Sean's spraying this on um, it's going to air dry so that's going to destroy any bacteria or any viruses now there's a balance here you may be thinking well do you have to use a product like that now we carefully calculate the parts per million but we're wanting to hit a safe zone because we're producing food commercially and like sean said a, a clean environment is a safe environment so we we have um high standards but we're also regulated by uh local food authorities as well as the usda so that's why we use the methods and the products we use but this is just the last step in the process to ensure that when we leave this room at the end of a production cycle this is all going to air dry and it's going to be essentially completely sanitized um, when we can start our next production cycle. So the only step that's left in the process is to reassemble the equipment, put some food grade mineral oil on it, and we are ready for our next production day. So obviously you guys can see what a fantastic job I've done cleaning today. I, I still have sweat Excuse rolling you. down my back. <laughs> I got the floor cleaned. I got everything cleaned out back, you know, because I just, I love cleaning. Everybody knows what it's like to have somebody in the kitchen that loves to cook but doesn't like to clean. That's, uh, it really does take a village. So um, we wouldn't be able to start a nice clean production day. I obviously um, have the permission to sell meat commercially without uh, the governing bodies that come in and actually look at our stuff and say, you can, clean with it because if you have USDA inspection, they're going to have the ability to do a pre-op inspection. Um, you have your SSOPs, you have your HACCP plan. Um, and it's, not that's, just, it's not just looking at it, it's looking under it, above it. It's the first it. thing you do right here, one of these, 
One of those. Hands and knees. One of these with the flashlight. flashlight. So mm. a yes. lot of goes into it. That's where Sean's expertise over the last 30 years have kept us flying high um, for all these decades. Obviously you notice like we didn't do the top of the walls, the ceiling or anything like that. You don't need to hit that stuff every day. You can hit the top of the walls, the ceiling and stuff once a week, once a month, whatever. If you get your problem areas taken care of, you're not gonna have any issues. If you don't like to clean, get somebody who does because you're gonna have a bacteria problem you if you like don't get it clean. That's <laughs> it's just, it's not if, it's when, and you don't want that. So the stuff's gotta be spec and span or you'll have problems down the road. You heard it. Believe it or not, this, this question, Oh, go ahead. I thought you were going to sign us off. I am signing well, us off. Hold on a second. I want to ask Josh. So, Josh, before you started cleaning, have you changed your behavior now that you do home? clean? No. I, I mean, changed it here, for sure. <laughs> exactly. So, you, you learned. Just step, step, set stuff back that, oh, the cleaning guy will get it. Well, That's right. Well, well I'm one of the cleaning guys. One thing you guys got to remember is we grew up in the dairy industry before we started this. The dairy industry has a lot of the exact same standards for sanitation. Josh worked in the dairy industry, so we kind of have a little bit of those tendencies to know what to do, but it's got to look like an operating room. Reminded me of cleaning a milking parlor. There it is. It's yes. always easier when somebody has food safety in mind. Even when they walk through your processing room, you don't know where their shoes have been. Maybe they're carrying something, they set it on one of your tables. So, uh, you know, a food safety minded person always has those things in mind. So, and somebody that cleans, we, you see the gloves, we learn to change our gloves even if you go a whole day grabbing these lugs and you get a bunch of meat caked up under there, it just makes it hard to clean. So a lot of times you'll see that you can stay ahead of yourself by not making stuff more dirty than it has to be, especially if you're the cleaning guy. Right. You'll right. appreciate that. You're going to have a happy right. wife at home. Now kids. she's going to know that I do a lot of cleaning at work. I used the excuse that I just got done cleaning at work, so I didn't want to clean right. at home. I don't do any cleaning at home, so but my vehicles are spectacular. And <laughs> right. trackers, my cabs and my trackers are as clean as this, so stop making fun of me. I'm sicko. <laughs> Believe it or not, this question we get a lot. In the comments, everybody wants to know, how do you keep your place so clean? Today, you saw it. Credit most of it to Sean and Josh for doing the cleaning. Fantastic job, and until next time, see ya.